you know, I got an opinion on this stuff, but I really don't want to give it. All my life, nobody ever really listened to me. Nobody. My mama, my, you know, my, my daddy, my brothers, nobody ever really listened to me. And now, when I try to tell my story, it's like I'm just talking to, you know, talking to brick walls. It's going one in one ear and, you know, right out the other one. This ain't no, you know, this ain't no, 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 no script. This ain't no, no, no story or that I, I done rehearsed or I done practiced. I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm telling y'all some real stuff I seen. Now, personally, I believe because I seen them. Some of y'all out there have seen and some of y'all haven't. Some of y'all listen to this, these scary stories just to, to, to get a kick out of it. But some of us listen because we seen it. And we want to be close to the other people that seen problem though after you seen is you really don't know what you saw you just know it wasn't human you just know it wasn't normal you just know it wasn't you know it wasn't nothing that you could explain and you know that the worst part is nobody ever gonna believe you Even with tears in your eyes, you can get on your knees and beg. Beg them to believe. Beg them just to hear you out. And if they do, they only entertaining you because they think you done lost your mind and they feel sorry for you. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my upbringing, a little bit about my background. I grew up, I grew up on the streets. You know, I grew up in the neighborhoods with, with, with gang members and drug dealers, and pimps and prostitutes, but the the, the amazing part about it was how those people always overshadowed the good folks. Everybody on the corner wasn't just dope dealers. Some folk was on the corner waiting for the bus on their way to work. You know, people will tell you about the guys that's waking up at the crack of dawn, you know, going to go sling a hammer or flip a burger even. Just, you know, they don't tell you about them guys. So, you know, you got your good folks and you got your bad folks, just like everywhere. So I grew up in a household with, uh, you know, my parents was just normal. My mama, she was normal, you know, she had worked little jobs here and there. And my pop, to tell you the truth, man, pop just, he was like a handyman. I don't know how he made his money, how he stayed so busy, but it just seemed like he always was fixing on something at somebody's house or business or something. So, you know, Pop just did the best he could. But it was always a disconnect between me and my parents. I don't know. You know, I wasn't a real bad kid at school. I was a, I was a class clown, you know, but, you know, I wasn't no real bad kid or nothing. But it just always seemed like it was a, a wall between us. 
It just seemed like they treated me different than they treated other people. They were always short with me. Never really would explain anything to me. You know, they'd give me a punishment that didn't fit the crime. When I do something small, you know, I got major punished, you know, grounded and for, for weeks at a time over small stuff. I don't know what it was. I can't even really even tell you when it started. But I remember the first time I saw them. The first time I seen them. Me and my parents got into a bad argument. And I was hollering at them, like in my pop's face, like I was gonna swing on them. At the time, I think I was uh, about a sophomore, I believe, in high school, and I'm just in his face. He in my face. But in the midst of talking to him, something caught my eye. The room we was in had a, the room to, uh, had a, a door to the bedroom that back in the corner. And back in that corner of that doorway, I saw just looked like an eye poked out for a second. You know, everything, it was kind of dark because the lights was off, but I just thought for one second I saw an eye poke out. Just long enough, you know, just to let me know it was there. So in the middle of us arguing, I got quiet, and you know, they thought I was quiet because you know, I, I, I won, I, I gave, I mean, they won, I gave up, but I got quiet because I was scared. That night I, you know, I sat up for, sat up for hours with the TV on, just, you know, watching Adult Swim, trying to keep my mind off of it. But the image just kept replaying itself in my head. The bedroom was, was my parents' room. I, I wonder was they safe that night. I was wondering would they be okay. So I got out of my bed and made my way into the kitchen. The kitchen was dark. I don't know about y'all, but it seemed like every house I ever stayed in just had a, a terrifying kitchen, man. Something about the kitchen at night, maybe because it's so wide open. Big windows or something, I don't know. But in that kitchen, I, I, I heard the floor creak before I got there. And it, it wasn't just a... No, it was a creak like somebody took a step, a couple steps. I know my parents would, you know, they'd be asleep because they gotta go to work. And they don't play about getting their sleep. So now it was me peeking around the corner. And I peeked into the kitchen. And I saw a shadow dark shadow like not just oh man like it was a mist like a, a dark shadow mist in the kitchen just floating floating through the floating through the just floating through the oh my god okay 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 let me let me get let me okay let me get a hold of myself it's hard for me to tell this story, y'all. So, just bear with me, okay? That mist in the kitchen, it had eyes. The same eye that I saw staring from my parents' bedroom early in the night. The mist started taking more of a, a human-type form. As the shape started turning more human, the eyes 
just looked directly at me. I was froze. I was trying to scream, but I couldn't get it out. I was just, I wanted nothing more than run. But my room was in the back of the house and I have to go through the kitchen to get to my parents' room or my siblings' room. I couldn't run past the creature, the ghost, the mist, whatever it was. The demon, that's what it is. I hate to say it, I hate to admit it, but I know it was a demon. I know it was a demon because as the creature took form, it took the form of a of a woman, it was still black, but it had a woman's figure. And the creature looked at me and took his fingers, long, bony, sharp fingers, and slid it across his throat. And we all know that mean death. That mean I'ma get you. So I figured this figure Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no angel. Ain't nothing nice. I stood there, still frozen. And eventually the figure dis just disappeared. Just blew away. Now I flipped the kitchen light on and I ran to my parents' room just screaming. They met me before I even, before I got to the room, they jumped up out the bed and standing in the doorway waiting on me. My brother got up, my, son, my other brother got up, everybody just, you know, just standing in the living room looking at me and I'm crying on my, I'm on my knees holding on to my, to my, my parents' legs. Just telling them, trying to tell them what I saw. But they didn't believe me. They thought I was just making it up. They thought I was, they thought I was high. They thought I had popped a pill or they thought I had been smoking something. It hurt. <laughs> it, it, it hurt when, you, when your people, you know, think things like that about you. When you try to do right, and you you do all you can, and they and they, and they call you a, a drug addict, a, a dope fiend, a weed head, whatever. I knew that that demon was coming for us or coming for me. And, and I, I was just trying to explain that to him. But anyway, time went by and that mist, that shadow, followed me, not just at home, but at school. One of my best friends, when I got to school that morning, you know, I come up to say what's up to him, and I looked at him, and his eyes, his eyes was black, black holes in his head. When I saw him, I jumped. Um, <laughs> fell to the floor. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy, only I saw it. And I saw the mist standing behind him. I saw that darkness standing behind him. I tried to tell him, I tried to explain it to him, but he laughed at me. 
called me stupid and 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 <sighs> joined me in front of the whole class, man. Everybody laughing at me. They're my best friend. He came up dead the next day. I got to school and, you know, uh, I was trying to find him. You know, just try to clear up the day before. But I ain't seen him all day. Nobody had seen him. He wasn't picking up his cell phone. And uh, I went by the house and after school, the parents told me that somebody shot him. He wasn't in no gang, you know, he, you know, he didn't sell no drugs, man. You know, he just was a normal kid, but for some reason, that demon marked him for death. Who else was marked? Was I gonna see death come to to everybody around me? Is this like the Grim Reaper or something? What's going on? What is this? I don't know. I tried to persevere. I tried to make the best out of this situation. So what I did was, I stopped talking to people about it. I stopped trying to reach out to my family and reach out to my friends and whoever else. I stopped talking. And I tried to ignore it. I tried to ignore people. I stopped giving eye contact. I changed. Just overnight. Everybody asked me, what's wrong with me? Why are you acting like this? What's going on? Now they wanted to talk to me. Now they wanted to see what was going on. But now it's too late. Now it was too late. demon tried it tried all it could to get me to interact with folks to get me to talk to get me to 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 tell what I've seen but I just shut it out and I shut it out and I shut it out until I guess he got fed up with me One day he stood behind my parents and he laughed. He laughed a sinister laugh, evil laugh. And he laughed until I finally looked up. I saw those holes for, for the, where my parents' eyes were supposed to be. I ran to him, man. I, I, I ran to him. And I grabbed my father. And I, I, I shook his shoulders trying to, to tell him to listen. That death was here. That he'd be dead by tomorrow. And my mama thinking that I'm threatening him or thinking I'm attacking him. She comes up and and she grabs onto me and and I pushed her. But I wasn't trying to like push her to hurt her. I was just, you know, just like saying, hold on, mama, just and she fell. And her head hit the table. Blood was everywhere. Just leaking instantly. And 
my pop, he just, oh, he went into a rage, man. He cursed me out. Oh, he cussed me out. He told me I was nothing. I was a loser. I was a zero. I was dead to him. And my, my anger got the best of me. My emotions took over. And I charged my dad. And we fought. And we fought. And we fought. We fought like we didn't know each other. We fought like two two animals in the street. Two dogs, two pit bulls. I ended up. I, I ended up really hurting my father. really, really hurt my father bad. And now, now they got me locked up in this room. It's, it's a dark room with um, you know, no, no, no paint on the wall or anything. I got a little bed and a little shower and a, and a little bucket for me to use. And sometimes they feed me. Sometimes they feed me. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they don't, but, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to keep track of the days uh, you know the um, the demon don't don't see me no more he don't he don't come no more I, I guess he got what he wanted he, I guess he wanted death and and, and for me to me to be locked up here. I guess he wanted me to be distant from my parents.